In a trading environment, it's important to monitor the quality of market data to ensure that you're actually trading on up-to-date and accurate price. Now, in this example, we see a number of A and B feeds received across different markets. And in fact, the A feeds are all coming over one service provider link and the B feeds another. Now, calls detecting gaps in those feeds and essentially when market data is sent from the exchange, it's as a UDP multicast, which means if any packets are lost due to congestion or other factors, um, then they won't automatically be retransmitted. And, and that's obviously an issue because you're going to be missing crucial market data. So what Core was doing is it's actually looking within the messages and it's tracking the sequence numbers. So if any packets are lost, we see a jump in the sequence numbers and we can alert that as, as missing data and market data gap. The pie chart here is showing us a breakdown of which feeds have gaps on and we can see it's actually exclusively the B feeds. And that's actually backed up in the tables here on the right hand side as well. All the A feeds are running clean, zero gaps, uh, whereas the B feeds, it's a different picture. Now, the feed handlers themselves are pretty good at arbitrating between this, so this probably won't be causing an issue. Uh, but imagine for a moment the A feed were to hiccup or go down, um, then we can't necessarily guarantee the quality of the B feed. So we should investigate and take a closer look. Now, if I scroll down a little bit further in this dashboard, uh, we can see we have a time series of, uh, of the gaps, and I can hover my mouse over to see when they're occurring. Um, a little bit further down, we're looking at microburst activity of the different feeds. But let's take a look and uh, drill into one of the feeds that has a problem. And I'm going to pick the Urex EBSB feed. If I click on that, we get a couple of options. Uh, and I'm going to go and look at the market data feed detail. So here we see the gap chart in a little bit more detail. Uh, we, we're just looking, focusing now on this one feed. Um, and below it, we're looking at the activity of that feed as well. Now, we're actually looking at a number of different granularities here. So first off, let's just take a look at the one second rate, uh, which would be typical of a standard monitoring approach. Uh, and you can see here it's peaking just up to about 20 meg, um, but, uh, but not beyond that. The microburst, though, tells us a different story. Um, it's peaking much higher, up to 50 meg. But what looks suspicious is it's not going above 50 meg. Uh, when it hits that 50 meg line, it stops. And actually at those points as well, this is when those gaps are occurring. So this has all the hallmarks of network congestion that the feed is actually being throttled to 50 meg. Um, it's actually bursting above that at the source end, causing packets to be queued and lost. Uh, and that's reflecting in the gaps that we're seeing. So just to get a, a better sense of that, I'm going to switch across to the A feed because we knew that was running clean and it's a, on a different service provider link. Uh, and again, we see zero gaps there for the A feed. And as we scroll down to look at the microburst, we can see that it's actually bursting much freer, way above 50 meg, uh, up to almost 175 meg. So this is really the root cause. We can be pretty certain now that this is actually a service provider issue throttling that bandwidth uh, and causing packet loss at the exchange end due to congestion. Uh, hence, we're seeing gaps received on site here. Um, now, one other thing I can do just finally, if I click back to the B feed, um, I can actually drill into one of these gap events. Uh, if I click on that, we can then drill straight down into cause event inspection. Uh, and we're going to see a list here of all of those messages. Uh, so we have a time, five minute time frame here uh, and down the bottom here we can see this clocking up but we've got hundreds of thousands of messages. In fact we're up to six million messages in this five minute period so a very very busy time. We can see the sequence numbers being tracked but what we can do is just filter out on the, uh, the gaps here. So I'm going to apply a quality filter, uh, select message sequence gaps and apply that uh, and what we'll see now is all the occurrences of gaps. Um, here are the sequence numbers. These are the messages that were seen following a gap or following a gap, uh, following a jump in the sequence number. Uh, and we can see there's 69 occurrences of those uh, in the last five minutes. Now we also see the contract description ID here as well. So these are these specific instruments that have been affected and we see the timestamps of when. Now we can quickly pull off a report as well, which may be useful, maybe to compare with the logs on the feed handlers. 
Um, so we've just seen in uh, really just a couple of screens, we've got a good picture of the overall health of the market data fees. We've identified a service provider problem, and we've also been able to drill into a particular feed and pull off a report of gaps so we know exactly which instruments have been affected.